stories around the world to stories here at home. This is the National News Broadcast. I'm Chamindi Samarasekara. I'm Charity Miniparaji and here are today's headlines. The government declares railway employees who fail to report to duties will be considered as those who have vacated their jobs. The Solicitor General informs the court that application as well as documents pertaining to the passport of Gota Beharaj Paksha are not in the Department of Immigration and Immigration. Sixteen parties and organizations extend support to Minister Sajid Premadasa. This LFP hopes that problem relating to symbol would be resolved soon. Twenty candidates place their deposits for the presidential election. 25 persons killed in a terror attack in the state of Mali. Now for the news in detail. President Mike Tripala Sirisen has presided over several ceremonies held in connection with the declaring open of many projects constructed under the Pibidamu Polonarwa District Development Program. The President has visited with the students the new classroom building at the Kumudupura Primary School built under the Pibidamu Polonarwa Program at a cost of 5.5 million rupees. Several programs including distribution of equipment and library books to students has also taken place. A classroom building at the Sri Rahula Junior School in Lower Ambagaswava, constructed at a cost of 5.6 million rupees, was also declared open under the leadership of the President. The President has also taken part in the ceremony to West with the students the new Dhamma School building at the Sri Jai Bimbarama Viharaya in Madhirigiriya constructed under the Pividamu Polonaru District Development Program. Cost of this project amounted to 2.8 million rupees. A sum of 500,000 rupees has been donated on this occasion as expenses for surgery of student Dilan Madhushank of Madhirigiriya. The President has also declared open the newly constructed Dharma Shala at the Sri Vijayarama Viharaya in Madhirigiriya built at a cost of 3. 5 million rupees. The President also took part in the ceremony to West with the Mahasangha, the Bhikkhu Dormitory and Arms Giving Hall at the Saraswati Devi Pirivena in Madhirigiriya, New Town. The building was constructed at a cost of 7.4 million rupees under the Pibdemu Pulonaru Development Program. The Mahasangha has chanted period to bless the President on this occasion. A classroom building built at a cost of 5.5 million rupees at the Sansun Gamma Primary School was also declared open today. President Matri Pala Sirisena has presided over a special commemoration ceremony in connection with the 150th birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi at the President's office last evening. Mahatma Gandhi, born on the 2nd of October 1869, was a fearless leader who had waged an anti-imperialist struggle to rebellion India from the clutches of British colonialists. Gandhi had spreadheaded his fight under the Indian National Congress, gave leadership to other imperialist and imperialist struggles through, throughout the world. He was a barrister at law and mediated himself extensively to usher social justice and also to safeguard political rights. He had contributed practically as well as physiologically psychologically to eradicate differences based on color. Mahatma Gandhi had passed away at the age of 78 years on the 30th of January 1948 after giving leadership to the Indian freedom struggle. President Maitri Pala Sirisena has garlanded and paid floral tributes to a portrait of Mahatma Gandhi at the commemoration ceremony. Indian High Commissioner in Sri Lanka Taranjit Singh Sandhu has also garlanded the portrait. Deputy Indian High Commissioner in Sri Lanka Vinod K. Jacob and President Secretary of the R. Seneviratna were also present in this occasion. A bronze 
A bronze bust statue of Mahatma Gandhi was unveiled at the Temple Trees today to commemorate 150th birth anniversary of the pioneer leader of India's independence. Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe and Indian High Commissioner Taranjit Singh Sandhu have also participated in this event. Floral tributes were conducted after the unveiling of the statue. Two Gandhi birth ceremony commemoration stamps have also been issued. Ministers Navin Dizanayake, H.M. Halim and Sagal Ratnayake were among the distinguished gathering present on this occasion. The Ministry of Interior and Home Affairs says that Friday the 4th of October has not been declared as a government holiday. Secretary to the Ministry H.M. Garmini Seneviratna has issued a special communique in this connection today. Minister Ashok Abesing has says that railway employees who fail to return to duties will be considered as those who have vacated their post. He also said that a request has been made from the President to declare railway service as an essential service. Minister Ashok Abe Singh has said that those who are relying on tax money of the people have a responsibility to return to work without putting the people into difficulty. He said that the strikes have not accepted his request to return to work. He further said that he has requested Secretary to the President to make railways an essential service. Thereafter, the legal measures will be taken. Those who have failed to report to duties without informing will be considered as vacated their posts. He also said that the Ministry Secretary has ordered to take necessary measures yesterday. The minister also said that the secretary has forwarded the letter to the general manager of railways inquiring what measures were taken regarding workers who did not report to duties. The minister further said that the general manager has responded by saying that letters will be sent to all those who fail to report duties that they will be considered as those who have vacated their services. It has also been pointed out that those who have received the letters could contact the authorities and to take remedial measures. The minister Railway Engineer Union says that trains will be deployed from tomorrow using railway engineers. President of the Railway Engineering Drivers Assistant Union, Danushka Pereira, said that they will take measures to conduct train services if a written permission is given to their union. Meanwhile, the Ceylon Teachers Services Union has temporarily suspended the scheduled strike. Deputy Solicitor General of the state, Nerin Pulle, says that application and documents relating to passport of Gota Bharaj Paksha are not available at the Department of Immigration and Immigration. He made these remarks before the three-member bench of judges of appeals court appearing on behalf of the control of immigration and immigration. A three-member panel of appeals court judges has examined today a petition filed requesting to an issue injunction preventing acceptance of former Defence Secretary Gota Bharaj Paksha as a Sri Lankan citizen. State Council appearing on behalf of Gota Bharaj Paksha said that his client would be adversely affected through conducting of case without documents. He further said that a case is being conducted in the Colombo Magistrate Courts regarding the fact based on this case. President of the Court of Appeal Justice Yasanth Koda Goda said that objections raised by the respondent will be considered. Attorney at law representing the petitioners said that under the 19th clause of the Citizens Act, only the minister in charge of the subject is empowered to issue dual citizenship. He said that, however, the certificate of citizenship to Gota Bharaj Paksha had been issued not by the minister in charge but by the then president Mahindra Paksha. He added that, therefore, that was an illegal act. The lawyer representing the petitioner further stated that accordingly, the citizenship certificate of Gota Bharaj Paksha becomes documents without authority before the law. Deputy State Solicitor General Nerin Fulle, appearing on behalf of the respondent control of the Department of Immigration and Immigration and the Commission of Registration of Persons, said that under the Constitution, the executive power rests with the President. The State Deputy Solicitor General further stated that these powers are vested with the President even if a cabinet was not appointed. He further said said that even in the event of non-appointment of a minister in charge of the Citizenship Act, the President is vested with the powers of such minister. The three-member panel comprises President of the Court of Appeal Yasanth Kodagoda and Justice Mahindra Samaya Vardhana and Arjuna Besekar. The petition has been filed by two civil organization activists, Professor Chandra Gupta Tenuvara and Gamini Vyangoda. The support of former Minister Thauda Seneviratna and former Deputy Minister W.B. Ekanayaka has been extended to Sajid Premadasa at the upcoming presidential election. This was disclosed at a media briefing in Colombo today. 
Representatives of 16 parties and organizations have extended support to Sajid Premadasa today. They included leader of the National Development Front, Professor M.P. Attanayaka, leader of the Kandura Tevimukti Peramuna, Anton Ayyathure, General Secretary of the Communist Youth Association, S.R. Edward, and leader of the National People's Party, Padmasiri Kodikara. Minister Sajid Premadasa said that the duo former Minister Atauda Seneviratna and former Deputy Minister W.B. Ekanaka have both sprung from the lowest stratum of the society and elevated to the level of ministers. He also said that Atauda Seneviratna is a giant in the leftist movement, uh, in the rather the leftist movement, and W.B. Ekanaka is a politician who held portfolios in the provincial council and in government. Both of them are committed to exemplary politics. Minister Sajid Premadas also said he has sacrificed his salary and allowances for the sake of the suffering masses of the country. <laughs> Punchitanin, Palat, Sabahavaraha, Mati Dura Darala, Parliament, New Jamati Durian Darala, Deshapal, Matavadian Tula, Yam Venaswi Matila, Ape Mahagadar Tekutula City, Ape Pakshat Samagatel Banagan City, Nisa Visheshen, Mitumala, Depala Tulu, Parma Darshi, Deshapal, Salahavu, Jati Kaviapare, a Siruma Parshwen, Pakshagarana Makada with Samakatula City, Sati Vashedma, Parma Darshi, Deshapal, Kriyaka Karanata Katitura, a Parma Darshi, Deshapal, Ek Anga Katita Tamai, Adamama. Prasiddhi ma prakash karanne mere te dukpi din janata avinuven janadi pati vetupat padiyat dimanava te siyal lakma paritya ka karala mere te phodi manusya avinuven e maha yutu ka maista karanne bang apa ka pavisiti na ekine ka niyamastha avi prakash kar. Former Minister Thaudu Seneviratna said that he is looking at the interest of the country and added that in the past 10 years more attention has been focused on frauds and corruption of high-level MPs and ministers. As a result, the, peoples were, the people were disgruntled with parliament and politicians. May Tate Tula, Apita, Paramadarchi, De Sapalna, Via Parex, the Happy Me Kati to Karanda, Arabakali, a Pirisudu De Sapalne Karaganianda, Apita, Arapate, Melu, Tema, Ape, Porto Pateng Emma, Epate, Pisala, Aurdu Ganda Kedala, Dushan, Samadu Chai, Pirilai, May Patenut Me, Mahaban Kutate, Uda, Yankisi Tatu at Katilati, Mutuma. Janadi Betivella, Kata Niti Rekarogi Kati to Kerala, May Dushane, May Rating, Natikari Mata, Obutuma, Piri to do Avanka Desapala Chek Katheater, Rate, Podujanata, Hitote Katheater, May Rata Hadanda, Api Obutuma, Toragate, Arapata Duno Tema, Sala, Kalabaganiak, Maha Rata Pataquino, Hitting Api, Raka Sealing Hatheater, Samajavadi Hatheater. Abi Kalpana Karani, Obutumate Kekatula, May Kaban Yanda, and the Apisatuino, May Janati Putimatu. Former Deputy Minister W.B. Ekanak said that Sajit Premadasi is like his late father and said that they will extend their fullest support for any development activity to be carried out under his leadership. Sri Lanka Freedom Party media spokesman and parliamentarian Veer Kumar Disanayaka says that dispute pertaining to the symbol at the discussions between the SLFP and the Sri Lanka Podhujana Perabuna will be resolved shortly. Parliamentarian Veer Kumar Disanayaka made these remarks at a media briefing in Colombo this morning. SLFP media spokesman parliamentarian Veera Kumar Disanayaka said that they have handed over relevant parties the facts relating to Lions Charter yesterday. These facts were related to the agreement signed between the candidate of the Podhujana Peramuna and the SLFP. Matters of concern have arisen with regard to the secretary of the Podhujana Peramuna and candidate Gota Behraja Paksha regarding the symbol issue. However, the SLFP is confident that the problem could be resolved. Vera Kumar Disanayaka further said that both the progressive forces headed by the CLFP as well as national forces are able to unite under the common symbol. He also said that the CLFP has informed the Election Commission on the relevant facts regarding the representation of a presidential candidate of the CLFP. Pragasili Balavega, Evagem, Jatika Balavega, Mehamotam, Pulwankamatino, Podu, Lakunakata, Ekatuin, 
පොදු වැඩපිළිවෙලකට يعني ලකුණක් කිව්වොත් එහෙම මෙතන පොදු ලකුණකින් වැදගත් වෙන්නේ හැම වෙලේම අපි ප්‍රගතිශීලී ව්‍යාපාර විදිහට ඒ වගේම මේ රටේ ජාතික මතවාදී නියෝජනය කරන ව්‍යාපාර විදිහට ලකුණක් හැම වෙලේම නියෝජනය කරනවා ජාතික වැඩපිළිවෙල ජාතික න්‍යායපත්‍රය ඒ වගේම ජාතික දේශපාලන ගමන හැබැයි ශ්‍රී ලංකා නිදහස් පක්ෂේ පක්ෂයක් වශයෙන් Tamange ක්‍රියාමාර්ගයක ඉන්නවා ඒක සාමාන්‍ය දෙයක් ශ්‍රී ලංකා නිදහස් පක්ෂේ අපේක්ෂිකව ඉදිරිපත් කරන්න අවශ්‍ය කරන මැතිවරණ කොමිසම් වෙත දැනුම් දීම් කරලා තියෙනවා. ඉතින් ඒවා අපි ක්‍රියාදාම තියෙන ඔබට මීට කලින් මාධ්‍ය ඕන තරම් අපි පැහැදිලි කරාවෝ. He has also expressed opinions regarding the meeting between the president and a group of UNP representatives including presidential candidate Sajid Premadasa yesterday. SLFP media spokesman parliamentarian Veera Kumar Disanayaka said that stories were published yesterday regarding a meeting between the president and leaders of the UNP. He added that the president as the head of the state is able to meet and discuss with any person. Therefore it should not be a matter of concern for anybody of the president's meeting. A request has been made from the UNP UNP regarding meeting of the president accordingly a meeting has taken place Sajid Premadas party president Kabir Hashim and Akhil Viraj Khari Wasam were said to have meet the president on this occasion he has reiterated that anybody has a right to meet the president and to discuss the challenges faced by the country here are opinions expressed by candidates contesting the presidential election Presidential candidate of the Sri Lanka Podu Janna Peramuna Gotabe Rajpaksa said that they have turned into a strong force through participation of professionals, businessmen and entrepreneurs. He also said that the people have basically pointed out that the give that they give prominence to the security of the country. Gotabe Rajpaksa further said that they give a pledge that they will fulfill the task of safeguarding the nation. Presidential candidate General Mahesh Sena Naika said that the national security does not relate merely to terrorism. attacks it has also to be dealt with food security environmental security and health security he added that according to his experiences they are all part of national security he also said that he has a notion that a group which loves the country and who are not fraudsters should be elected to parliament mahesh sena naik also said that a group of specialists are rallying round him for this purpose Presidential candidate of the Jatika Janna Balavegya Anur Kumar Disanayaka said that he has challenged Gotabe Rajpaksa and Sajid Premadasa to come forward and say that they would not grant housing loan or a job or samurdhi on political grounds under an administration of their leadership if that happens none of them would survive he also said that during election times such candidates don't do anything more than filling a political paper they are unable to give an assurance on the provision of housing loans or jobs Anur Kumar Disanayaka also said that he would like to tell those who were present at the meeting that their children would not be given special privileges just for the reason of participating in the meeting when a government of the jatika janabala vegya comes into power A protest was launched today in Colombo demanding to provide any information over rights and political activities Lalit and Kugan who were allegedly disappeared in Jaffna the protest was organized by the frontline socialist party The protesters sought for justice over the alleged disappearance or the abduction of activist Lalit Kumar Veeraraj and Kogan Muruganathan several years ago after the protest the protesters submitted a letter to the judicial service commission on this regard Twenty candidates have already placed deposits to contest the forthcoming presidential election three candidates placed deposits today ASP Lianage representing the Sri Lanka Kamkaru Pakshe has filed deposits at the election office in Rajagiri today. Samaravira Veeravani and Ashoka Vedigammanava have placed deposits as independent candidates today. Accordingly, 11 candidates representing political parties and 9 candidates as independent contestants have so far placed deposits. A meeting between the representatives of these candidates and the election commission has taken place at the Rajagiri election of East today. The meeting was held relating to security during election campaigning and also on the usage of digital cutouts and election propaganda throughout electronic channels. 
The election commission says it is totally prohibited to display digital name boards along roads or in cinema halls in a manner to promote any candidate or any party contesting the presidential election. Director General of the Commission, Saman Sri Ratnayaka, says that it is an offence punishable under the Election Act to engage in such activity. The Election Commission reiterates that measures will be taken under the election law against any person engaging in propaganda activities violating the relevant laws. The Secretary to the Foreign Ministry says that Sri Lanka needs tangible assistance to consolidate on Sri Lanka's restoration of normalcy in the aftermath of Easter Sunday attacks. Foreign Secretary Ravinath Arya Singha made these remarks during a meeting with Under Secretary General of Office of Counterterrorism Radimir Voronkov. The Foreign Secretary also met Executive Director of the Counterterrorism Committee Executive Directorate Michelle Konix on the sidelines of the UN General Assembly this week. Foreign Secretary Ravinata Ari Singh is presently leading the Sri Lankan delegation to the 74th session of the UN General Assembly in New York. Voronkov expressed the readiness of the UN to provide further assistance to Sri Lanka in future endeavors in integrating with the APIPNR system and in countering violent extremism. Konix informed that the UN is developing a framework for cooperation with Sri Lanka, including measures to be compliant with international counterterrorism obligations under relevant Security Council resolutions. Secretary R. S. Singh has said Sri Lanka was adopting a whole-of-government approach in addressing the areas of concern and that it was important that programs of assistance are tangible and can be integrated with the Sri Lanka's plans. In this regard, the ASG and the Foreign Secretary agreed on the need for both the government and the UN to work together to identify tangible actions to serve the interest of the country. Welcome back to the news. Lord Tariq Ahmed of Wimbledon commenced the efforts taken by the government and President Maithripala Sirisena to strengthen the process of reconciliation. UK Minister of State for the Commonwealth emphasized the need for international cooperation to fight terrorism in all its forms, which has become a global threat. Lord Tariq Ahmed of Wimbledon, UK Minister of State for the Commonwealth, the UN and South Asia has praised the steps taken up by Sri Lankan government and President Maitri Pala Sirisena to improve the reconciliation process amidst the severe challenge posed by the Easter Sunday attacks. Lord Ahmed, who is on a brief visit to Sri Lanka, met President Sirisena at the President's official residence in Colombo yesterday. He said there is no place for violent terrorist acts by persons with extremist mindset in any religion. President Sirisena thanked the United Kingdom for timely assistance provided to Sri Lanka to strengthen security situation in the aftermath of Easter Sunday terror attacks. He also commended the assistance extended to Sri Lankan intelligence services and police to probe the incidents of terrorism and foreign connections of the Islamist terrorist. The president also referred to to long-standing development assistance by the Commonwealth and Lord Ahmed said the Commonwealth could extend further support to environmental issues such as climate change. Secretary to the President Uday R. Seneviratna and British High Commissioner Sarah Houghton were also present during this meeting. Many professionals in Sri Lanka are invited to take part in early years fellowship provided by the World Bank under its Early Learning Partnership Program. Governments are increasingly seeking advice and support from the World Bank to increase investments in the early years and the improve the quality of early childhood services. Sri Lanka is among 28 priority countries whose professionals are invited to apply for the Early Years Fellowship provided by the World Bank under its Early Learning Partnership program. The Early Learning Partnership launched the Early Years Fellowship in 2017 to support governments and World Bank terms to scale up investments in the early years. The program is expanding globally and a second cohort of fellows from around the world is currently being recruited. Selected fellows will took to promote early childhood development across education education, health, nutrition, social protection and other relevant sectors. Fellows will be hired as short-term consultants at the World Bank for one year with a second year renewable based on performance and continued work program demand. Interested candidates should submit a completed application from and receive by Friday, October 11th. 
The government has decided to reduce the tax on a kilo of imported big onions by 39 rupees with effect from midnight yesterday. Chairman of the Cost of Living Committee, Minister P. Harrison, says that the government has taken this decision in order to overcome the difficulties experienced by the consumers as a result of price increases in a kilo of big onions in the market. Bulk price of a kilo of big onions in the local market has risen to 300 rupees as a result of a decision of the Cost of Living Committee to safeguard big onion farmers to increase the tax on a kilo of imported big onions by 40 rupees. Minister Harrison said that 75% of the local big onion harvest has already been reaped. The Cost of Living Committee hopes a reduction of the tax would reduce the price of a kilo of big onions by 50 to 70 rupees. The committee adds that importers will be accorded the opportunity to import big onions from Egypt and Pakistan. Another stage in the series of the medical camps being implemented under the theme GLB Hospitality by the Development Lotteries Board on behalf of its marketing representatives and marketing assistants took place in Badullah district. This was the sixth in the series of medical camps. Nearly 500 persons have received treatments, medical examinations and insurance of medicines, medicines as well as provisions of medical advice have taken place. Spectacles were given to partners after an eye clinic. Chairman of the NLB, Sena Surya Peruma and General Manager Andra Jaratna were among those who have attended this event. The All Shares Price Index closed at 5,697.93 points, decreased by 35.71 points, and the SNPSL20 Index closed at 2,746.82 points, also dropped by 14.10 points at the end of trading in the Columbus Stock Exchange today. Turnover was over 500 million rupees. Here's a summary of market details of the Columbus Stock Exchange today. With the forecast, Med Department says that showers or thunder showers will occur over most parts of the island after 2 p.m. Fairly heavy falls above 75 mm are likely at some places in western Sabargamo, central northwestern Anuva provinces and in Gaul, Mathara and Anuradhapura districts from tomorrow. Light showers may occur in the coastal areas of the southern province in the morning too. Misty conditions can be expected at some places in western Sabargamo central and north central provinces during the morning. General public is kindly requested to take adequate precautions to minimize damages caused by temporary localized strong winds and lightning during thunder showers. And with that, we conclude tonight's news. Do watch us tomorrow at the very same time. Good night.